The Arctic Circle is harsh, vast, and conceals a lot of disturbing things under its layers and layers of permafrost. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the creepiest stuff scientists have come across in this part of the world. We're starting things off with the case of the ping. So reports of strange sounds often described as whistles, hums, or pings have been documented in the Arctic. And one of the most famous cases involving a strange sound is the Arctic ping. Back in the summer of 2016, in a small Inuit hamlet called Igloolik in Nunavut, hunters started getting concerned about a strange ping noise coming from the Fury and Hecla Strait, which is a channel of water about 75 miles northwest of Igloolik. Now, the hunters' primary concern wasn't just how bizarre the sound was and the fact that they couldn't identify it, but the fact that it seemed to be scaring away the sea mammals in the area that they depend on. The sound seemed to be coming from the sea floor. And this wasn't just a few residents reporting the sound either. This was a big enough deal that the military was actually sent in to investigate, but they didn't find anything. One theory is that members of Greenpeace were somehow involved, creating the sound in order to scare off the animals from the hunters, but there's never been any definitive proof of that hypothesis. Next up, we have the Arctic UAPs. So just like with any remote area, the Arctic has its fair share of reported UFO sightings. And now some of these can be attributed to military activity or just misidentification of natural things, but some are still very much unexplained. And one of the biggest stories to come out recently is back in February of 2023, when all those UAPs were shot down over a bunch of different airspaces, mostly in Canada and the United States. News Nation just recently followed up on this story, saying that there were various sources claiming that there was a previously undisclosed encounter, eight or nine other UAPs, and this was right over the Arctic Circle. This was on February 1st, just a few days before the main objects had been shot down. Fighter jets were sent up from NORAD to engage with the objects, but the UAPs flew off at high speed, and no, they still aren't sure what these things were, unless they're just hiding that info from the public. Either way, it's pretty eerie stuff. Next up on the list, we have a very alarming discovery of viruses. Scientists have come across viruses like the Mola virus, for example, in the permafrost of the Arctic Circle. Permafrost is permanently frozen soil, and as it thaws, it exposes ancient layers, some of which contain ancient viruses. Mola virus is a type of giant virus, and the fact that viruses can linger deep within the ice, lying dormant for thousands of years, and then unleash themselves on the world when they're thawed out, is a pretty freaky idea. Luckily, there haven't been any discovered so far that pose a serious threat to humans, but that doesn't mean that more potentially deadly ancient viruses won't rear their ugly head and become active as more permafrost starts to thaw. Who knows what could be locked away under there. If you are enjoying our channel so far, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave your thoughts and comments down in the comments below. So speaking of these dormant viruses breaking free from melting Arctic ice, we have the very creepy case of the Siberian anthrax outbreak in 2016. And so unlike the dormant ancient viruses that I talked about before, this actually did affect human beings. Apparently this was caused by a heat wave thawed a 75 year old reindeer carcass that had been infected with anthrax. The thawing process released dormant spores of the bacteria responsible for anthrax into the surrounding environment. The spores contaminated the soil and water sources nearby, and then local reindeer that were grazing on the contaminated land, of course, came into contact with these anthrax spores. Over 2,300 reindeer were infected. This then led to humans getting infected when they consumed the contaminated reindeer meat. About 100 people were hospitalized with anthrax exposure. One person even lost their life. So yeah, this was pretty freaky. Could have been much worse, but freaky nonetheless. Anthrax really is no joke. Just goes to show like how insidious dormant bacteria really is. So Greenland sharks are one of the largest shark species. They can grow to lengths of 24 feet, sometimes more. That's a big shark. You don't need me to tell you why that's scary. Now, here's something that I 
could not believe about these things. Greenland sharks have a very long lifespan. And when I say long, I mean like long. Again, I read this and was shocked. They live between 250 to 500 years. 500! That means there could be a Greenland shark swimming around up in the North Pole right now that's been alive since the 16th century, just a handful of years after the Middle Ages. Blows my mind. These sharks have a bit of a creepy look to them as well, with a thick, robust body, a rounded snout, dark gray or black in color. Their eyes also have this pale, almost zombie kind of look to them. These are apex predators, their diet consisting of fish, seals, and other marine animals, and they live deep under the water at depths of around 650 to 3,000 feet, and they've been recorded even deeper than that. Next on the list is radioactive fallout. So in the 50s and 60s, a lot of nuclear testing took place, and this released a lot of radioactive material into the atmosphere. These tests, which were conducted both above and below ground, led to the dispersal of radioactive particles over long distances, and the Arctic region, even though it was far away from the primary testing sites, ended up accumulating a lot of this fallout, which was transported there through precipitation patterns before finally settling in the ice and snow. The fallout included cesium-137 and strontium-90, which stay radioactive for long periods of time, and they contaminated soil, water, and wildlife. And just like with those pesky viruses, as Arctic ice melts, there are concerns about these radioactive particles getting re-released redistributing the fallout and affecting local populations and wildlife. Negatively, of course. You know what's creepy? Corpses. Dead stuff. It's just icky. Ever thought of that? Yeah, this is very enlightening information I'm sharing with you right now. Well, even creepier are old but very well-preserved corpses. Mummies. Well, the Arctic ice is a perfect environment for keeping corpses nice and cool, and that's why mummies are found in this part of the world all the time. In one case, in Greenland, the Arctic environment preserved all these mummified bodies, which dated back between 1475 and 1635. These human remains were found in burial sites, and the cold, dry conditions of the Arctic led to the natural mummification process. There have also been several remains of the crew of the doomed Franklin expedition dug up over the years. They look pretty freaky. I mean, if zombies actually started rising up from their graves, they'd basically look like these mummies, depending when they died, anyway. Next, we have the discovery of crashed planes from World War II. There have been a number of World War II planes found buried under Arctic ice over the years. Take one case in 1992, for example. During World War II, a P-38 Lightning fighter aircraft and two B-17 Flying Fortress bombers were part of the Lost Squadron, which encountered a blizzard while supporting the Allied war effort in the British Isles. And because of severe weather conditions, the aircraft were forced to make an emergency landing on the glaciers of Greenland in 1942. All the crew members did survive the emergency landing, but they had to endure very harsh conditions on the ice for nine whole days before finally being rescued. The aircrafts, though, were left behind on the glacier. Over the following decades, the shifting ice sheets of Greenland gradually buried the plains under about 250 to 300 feet of ice. But then in 1992, one of the P-38 Lightning fighters was successfully extracted from the ice. This aircraft became known as Glacier Girl. And remarkably, despite being encased in ice for like half a century, the P-38 was actually restored to flying condition. Next on the list are Arctic sea ice circles. NASA scientists during the Operation Ice Bridge mission over the Beaufort Sea in the Arctic observed three holes in the sea ice surrounded by irregular circular shapes. It's still not entirely known what causes these circles, but some possibilities are seals or whales creating the holes, allowing water to flow out and from the circular shapes, or warm water bubbling up from below. These strange holes appear in an area of young, thin ice that was recently open water, with wave-like ripples on its surface. Arctic sea ice is composed of both multi-year and seasonal ice, and has been diminishing and thinning over the years, particularly, as you can imagine, in the summer. The Arctic seems to be warming at twice the global average rate. Some scientists are predicting that the Arctic could be almost ice-free 
in the summer by the 2040s. Finally though, we have the release of methane. We talked about ancient viruses thawing out of the permafrost earlier in the video, but that's not the only concerning thing concealed deep within the layers of Arctic ice. So the Arctic region has vast amounts of permafrost, permanently frozen soil, and permafrost is thawing, so I guess it's not permanently frozen then, which is exposing organic matter that's been frozen for thousands of years, like dead plants and animals, like the eerily well-preserved yucca mammoth found in Siberia back in 2010, for example. And when permafrost thaws, the previously frozen organic matter becomes available to bacteria, which then break it down, releasing Methane is also released from the seafloor in some Arctic areas through seeps. These seeps can be natural, but things like oil drilling can also release methane, and a lot of scientists are concerned about this because excessive amounts of methane ain't great for the environment. So on that note, let's give uh, you commenters some love with another comment shout out. This one was posted on my top 10 dark things caught on camera by airplane passengers video by Christine Paris 5607 who writes, my dad was a private pilot and he used to take me on flights. And we once witnessed another plane, a small Cessna 162 practicing stalls and couldn't pull out at one point. My dad was radioing in the info to the airport as the plane vanished between two mountains. It was a feeling of absolute helplessness which has stuck with me forever. Yeah. No doubt, that would have been an absolutely harrowing thing to see, my god. Alright, with all that said though, I've been your host James and I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.